All right, so last chapter, last chapter we talked a lot about matrices, and I told you at the end of this chapter, we would be saying we'd be referring to the inverse matrix matrices that we talked about. Okay, uh, today we're using matrices to solve systems, so you're going to use your graph and calculator to do that. It's important to note on your test there will be a portion um, where you're not allowed to use your graph and calculator at all. All right, so. And keep that in mind as we progress towards our test that, uh, this Thursday, okay? Uh, the test could, I'm pretty sure it's only going to take Thursday, but there's a chance it'll possibly flow into Friday, but um, right now it's on Thursday there, okay? So the matrix equation is AX equals B. How many remember that from last chapter? All right, good. So AX equals B. Tell your neighbor what A and B stood for. Okay, let's wrap up discussion. All right. The good news about today's material is if you can, um, if you can think back to 4-5 where it was really difficult, and many of you persevered, you had really good test scores and quiz scores on it. Um, uh, this is a lot easier. Okay, so we've got the coefficient matrix, which we are calling A. We've got our variable matrix, which we are calling X. And we got our constant matrix, which we are calling B. Remember, A and B stood for matrices. X is our variable matrix, it's whatever our variables are. Okay, so if we're applying this to some problems, for instance, let's just start with number one or number four here. Off. This will be off our assignment today. Okay, so you can add this one to your notes. So solve each system by using an inverse matrix. Now, remember when you multiply a matrix by its inverse, tell your neighbor what you get. See if we can re recall that. Okay, volunteer, what do we get? Yes, Austin? get the identity matrix and Lee can you remind me what an identity matrix looks like in general it's uh, one zero 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 one zero 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 one okay so it's a situation where you have diagonal ones and it depends like Lee just read off a three by three identity matrix right where in this one we probably get a two, two by two right because there's only two variables so if we're talking about an identity ma matrix, if we multiply a matrix by its inverse, we should get the identity. So if I'm going to use the equation A times X equals B, which is what we want to do here to solve this, we've got to define A. Well, A is going to be our coefficient matrix. Coefficient, tell your neighbor what a coefficient is. All right, let's see if anyone knows. What is a coefficient? Alyssa? Isn't that what it's being multiplied by? Yeah, good. It's what your variable's being multiplied by. All right? How many got that? Yeah. Some of us still know the math terms, but that's, that's kind of the math ease behind it. And once again, you guys are getting to a point where you're going to have to start reading your books more and more as you progress into college and you cover in a quarter what, they, what, what we typically might cover in a year or in two quarters, what we might cover in a year, um, that means you have a lot of homework where you're reading about math or you're studying it online or you're watching some online videos or maybe your whole course is online. And someone says coefficient, you're like, whoa, whoa, what's, what's that mean? You don't want to have to stop and Google hey, what's coefficient and try to learn all that. Hopefully we know what coefficient is. It's what's attached to your variable. So if you don't see something attached, so we have a 2 here. We don't see anything here. What is it? 1. 1. So we have a 1 there. And 3 and? One. Negative 1. Okay, so matrix A is our coefficient matrix. 2, 1, 3, negative 1. We call that our coefficient matrix. All right. Matrix B is our 
or not matrix B, matrix X is our variable, variable matrix. So we only have two variables, X and, y. X and Y. And matrix B is our constant, meaning there aren't any variables attached. So 1 and 9. So in order to do this, you have to have your X's and Y's on one side, right? And your constants on the other. Okay, that's what we have. So we have our variable matrix. So if you're taking good notes here. And for those of you who are like, this is easy. I don't even need to take notes. Keep in mind, at the end of the semester, when you have forgotten what's going on here and you need a little reminder, the best reminder you can have is your own handwriting. You know yourself best. You know what you'll forget. You'll know how you, fun you know how you function well. You know the little things that you need to write to yourself for you to recall this. All right? Remember, you're almost halfway done with this course in terms of the amount we cover. Chapter 5 and Chapter 6, remember I said Thanksgiving. It's tough to be thankful for your math class, class during Thanksgiving. You'd be thankful for all your friends. You probably won't be thankful for what you're doing. Chapter 5 gets tougher. Chapter 6 gets ultra tough. And then we get into brand new stuff. Well, chapter 6 is brand new. Chapter 5 is the last of our review for the year. Everything from 6 on is brand new to you. Okay, with the exception of maybe a little of 7. Those of you here this summer, that's when it'll really help you is next chapter. Starting then. Okay? So comp, coefficient, variable, constant. Write it down. You have it. In order to solve for our variable matrix, remember if we had this equation, AX equals B, and we were solving, how did we get rid of A and move it over here? Yeah? Multiply by its inverse. Multiply by its inverse. So we had to take the inverse of A and multiply it by B. Now remember, order mattered here. A inverse times B. How many recall doing that? Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take the inverse of A and multiply it by B. So X is going to be equal to A inverse B. Now it's easier for me to show it like that rather than having to rewrite everything. Right? So what I need to do is in my calculator I need to define A and B. So right now in your calculator define A and B. If you need help, can't recall, make sure you ask me as I'm walking. All right, now I've put mine in. I have a bunch of other matrices in there right now, but you'll notice my A matrix is a two by two. My B matrix is a one or a two by one, okay? Lily had a good question, do we put the variable? We don't have to put the variable matrix in, right? We know what the variables are. But if we quit here and we do, I've already hit it once. I go inverse of A times B and hit enter, I get two negative three. Now how many got two negative three? How many are just accepting that it's true? Yeah, how many actually checked it? How do you check? Plug it, plug it back in. Just plug it back in, right? If we put 2 in, 2 times 2 for x, so since we've defined top is x, bottom is y here, okay? So 2 times 2 is 4, plus negative 3 equals 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus negative 3, which is plus 3, equals 9. So it's correct. Now, could we have done this by hand? Yeah. Yeah, we could have used elimination. Um, that would have been real easy. 5x equals 10, x equals 2. That would have been faster than your calculator, right? Now, just because you can use your calculator doesn't mean it's the most efficient way. I mean, I can look at this and tell you what x is ultra fast because it's set up perfect for elimination. You should be able to do that. You should wow your friends at parties being able to tell them, look, man, I can do that. Just like that. Dude. Yes, Dylan. Uh, so how do you want us to provide our answer when we get there? Like That's x equals 2, y equals negative 3? Yeah, the best way is still to put like that. 2, negative 3. The order pair, 2, negative 3. It, if it's an order triple, put an order triple form. Unless they actually say leave it in matrix form. Or you're given it in matrix. Okay. Now it's just here are your variables. We we understand that an order pair is x, y. Yep. Okay. Any questions there? That's the inverse matrix. I want you to do an inverse matrix. First, write them out. Write them out. Write out your a, your mate or your x and your b. 
for number seven and then you get to plug it in your calculator so a rule of thumb in my class if you're using your calculator if you're going to do this on your calculator I need to see the things you're putting in so this is the work I need to see without the words I understand that okay so that's what I want to see for seven so go for it go ahead and calculate out seven there if you need help make sure you're asking as I'm walking around there okay so that's what I have in terms of what I'm putting into my calculator. I plug it all in. In this case, I should have a 3x3 three three and a 3x1. Three and solution. We get the order triple 0 0.9, 0 0.08 and 0 0.3. I'm not a fan of how the calculator lists that without the zero in front. It's always good to put that place value in the one spot there. Okay. Now how many got nine tenths, eight hundredths, and three tenths? Okay. Very good. Now some of you have asked how you throw that into fraction form. Remember it's just math, frac, and you can get it in fraction form. You hit math and then the fraction. Okay. Or back to decimal, math decimal, and it goes to decimal form for you. So math, option one, fraction, brings you to fraction. Okay. Any questions on it? Rate yourself one to five right now. Okay, those are inverse matrices. Pretty easy? Yeah. And the good news is that's the difficult way to solve. Okay, so let's go to the easy way. All right? We're going to talk about augmented matrices. Now, you love your calculator. And um, if I have time today, well, I think I might have it worked out somewhere. I'll show you what we, what we did back when I was in school, back when I was a kid. Okay, I'll show you what we, we did before we were using our calculators. But we're going to use an augmented matrix. So before we move to this, that, make sure you've titled this inverse matrices. These are inverse matrices. That is different than an augmented matrix to solve. Does this have anything to do with the chapter? Yeah, um, I don't know that this will be in your, in, I don't think this is in 4.6. I think 4.6 will just talk about inverse matrices. Okay, so we're going to use augmented matrices and RREF, which that's what your calculator calls it. That RREF actually stands for reduced row echelon form. And for those of you who um, have parents who dig math, you, can, you go home and you say, hey, we're doing reduced row echelon form today, and their minds might, you might see them look into a daze and just kind of start, I don't know, staring off into space forever because they think about how much joy that was when they were doing it in school. Okay? For you, it's extremely easy. All you need to be able to do is make an augmented matrix. And I'll show you actually by hand what you're doing to do a reduced row echelon form. Um, if I still have an example over there, we did one a couple years back when we had ultra amounts of time. Back when we had so augmented matrix, reduced row echelon form. We we're going to start out by making a matrix. We're going to combine A and C, or excuse me, A and B, one 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 zero. Skip the little space there. Not that that means anything mathematically. Then we'll go two negative two, three forty six, and then three seven. 11 and 80. The reason we call this is an aug augmented matrix is because we're putting two matrices together. So in textbooks, when you're reading about math, you'll usually see a little dashed line right there just to show, hey, this was one matrix, matrix A, and this was matrix B. Mathematically, that dashed line has no bearing on the problem. Okay, it's just showing that it's augmented. It's been put together. Everyone with me so far? What are the dimensions of that matrix? All right, three by four. I want you now to get your calculator out, and I want you to put that matrix into your calculator. As a three by four. Now, you won't have a dashed line in there, remember. You just see a three by four. If I see your calculator on your desk, I'll know you're ready to roll. Okay. You don't have to slam them down and break them. Okay. Don't get so excited. All right. 
So we're using reduced row echelon form. So if we go to matrix, so go to our matrix menu, menu so second, inverse there. Okay, you'll notice I've got my three by four matrix in there. Let me move that so you guys can see it a little better. Hopefully. Okay, and I go over to math. We haven't really used that much. There are a bunch of options here. You can find the determinant, okay, transpose things. Anyway, we can keep going. We've got identity, and we're going to keep going all the way down. Okay, once again, second matrix, go over to math. Okay, and we're going to go down, and I'm going to cruise all the way down until I see RREF. Now, notice there's an REF. That's reduced, or that's row echelon form. Okay, that gives you one answer. Our REF means you've reduced to find all answers. So I'm going to select our REF, and now I'm going to tell them which matrix I want to use. So I've got to go back into my matrix menu and select matrix A. Okay, and I hit enter, and that's what I get. Now, please note what, what we have here. You have an identity matrix right here, and you have a solution matrix here. Now understand what it's what it's read as. So it gets very easy for students to get lazy and go, oh my answer is negative six, negative eight, fourteen. I just I forget all this junk and I just read the last. Okay, you better really pay attention to what this junk means. These values in this row and row or in column one were all your x's. These values in column two were all your y's, and these values in column three were all your z's. Therefore, when you're reading your answer, these are all x's all y's, all z's, all solutions. This says 1x plus 0y plus equals, okay, 1x plus 0y plus 0z. So I'm not going to write this out every time. But notice, 0y and 0z is at 0. These are gone, so x equals negative 6. This says 0x, 1y, and 0z equals negative 8. This says 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 14. 1z. All right. So x, y, z. That's great because it has that order. So our solution is the ordered, pair, ordered triple, negative 6, negative 8, 14. Where is this on our That isn't on your sheet. It, well, it's number 10 is what we're doing. But I don't, our textbook doesn't hit augmented matrices and reduced row echelon form. I think it's valuable. That's pretty easy. That's easier than inverses. Okay. Any questions on that thus far? Cool. So we could have done that one the stuff we did, like the test yesterday, and still got the right answers. You could have, yeah. Um, however, that's why you had to show work. Okay. So if I couldn't figure out your work, then I didn't give you credit. All right. So it's kind of a big deal on that. So. And then on your chapter test, there will be parts where you won't be allowed to use graphing calculators now because I want to see that you can do it by hand. Why don't you try number 13? Use your calculator. Okay, so I've got my augmented matrix listed out there. It's always good to check your answers. Even I mean, Calculators will just give you answers. That's great, but you better make sure they're correct. All right, how many have an answer? Okay. 1x equals 2, 1y equals 6, 1z equals negative 4. Is that what everyone got? Did anyone not get that? Cool, you didn't? So a good strategy, when you're, you and your friends may be doing these, and maybe you're working with one other person, maybe me and Colt are working together, and we go, you're like, dude, I use my calculator. This is what I got. And he's like, hey, I use my calculator. So I got. And you go, well, let's see what you have. Remember, you can select a matrix, matrix A, and just hit enter and check your. So that's why we check to make sure everything matches up. So, you know, if Colt and I don't match. I put matrix A. He puts matrix A, and then we see maybe I forget a negative or he forgot a negative or something. Okay. So Colt, what'd you do? Uh, I messed up on the. Um Row three, column one. I accidentally put two instead of seven. Okay, and that really messes things up, right? Yeah. 
So, uh, Colt, I appreciate you playing along there. All right. Questions on it? Okay. Yeah. Um, when you're showing, like, you know how you say you have to show the steps in your calculator? Do you just, like... All you have, the work I need to see is this. That's okay. it. This is all I need to see. I need to see the matrix and the answer. I'll assume you can do the keystrokes because you got the answer. Good question. Remember, you can always check it, right? Plug them back in. I'm not going to go through that process. I know you know how to, but make sure it works in each one of those. Okay. So we've seen some... Yeah, Dylan. Oh, I'm just oh, Okay. Well done, man. All right. I want you... we got two more that I want to do. I want you to put in matrix B. Now, I realize that you... I'm hoping you could look at that and tell you can reduce things and stuff. But I want you to just play along right now. Put this into your calculator. Okay? Put it in and do reduced row echelon form on it. Just so, and I'm just going to use the exact coefficients. I'm not going to reduce. You could reduce. And if you reduce, I'd hope you'd figure it out without putting it in. But I just want you to see what a no solution and infinitely many will look like. Okay? All right. So here we go. I hit enter, and I get something that looks like that. Now let's make sure we understand what it's saying. This says, reading 1x plus 2y equals 0. Could that be true? No. I mean, it's an equation. It could be. And we don't know what x and y are. They haven't told us. But then we go to the next one. We have 0x plus 0y equals 1. Well, that can't be true because 0x is 0, and 0y is 0, so it's saying 0 plus 0 equals 1. That'd be great if you're earning money. You're like, dude, I have nothing, I have nothing, and I have 1. All right, if my nothing and my nothing makes 1. All right. Okay, this is not true. Therefore, this is a no solution. No solution. Remember, you have to know how to read, read the matrix. Okay, now hopefully you guys would have figured that out prior to putting it into your calculator. You'd have reduced here, divided by two, divide by two. You get x plus y or x plus two y equals four, and this says x plus two y equals five, meaning this says four equals five using substitution. Not true, therefore no solution. But if you put it in your calculator and you got that, there you go. Any questions on that one? Okay, put this one into matrix B, please. Okay, let's see what an infinitely many is going to look like. It's going to look a bit different. And then we will be done with putting stuff into our calculators as a class there. Oops. Okay, that's what I've got. We hit enter, we get 1x minus 3y equals 4. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. The next one says 0x plus 0y equals 0. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So what this is really saying is that 0 equals 0 right here. That's what that says. This just says that's the line all your answers are lying on. Right? If we were to graph this, you would find out, like if we reduce this, we take out a negative 4, we're left with x. Take out a negative 4, we're left with negative 3y. Take out a negative 4, we're left with 4. That is this equation right here. If we were to graph this, that would be the line that we would have. Both of those would be that line. That means it's infinitely many solutions. Your answer is um, 
anything on that line. Okay? So infinitely many solutions. What's up? Is there like a special trick like how infinitely many has like all zeros on the bottom and like no solution has the two zeros and the one? It's not really a trick. I mean, you just have to read the statement okay. kind of like this. I mean, if that's a true statement, then this is your answer. That's where it works. If, if it's a false statement like we had, I didn't write it down, but we had here, then, then that's not your answer. So yeah, if you want to think all zeros on the bottom, but you still have to read the other line. Okay, okay any questions? Yeah? Well, tell your neighbor first, what are the different ways we've learned to solve systems? Uh, hey. All eyes and ears up here, please. So in this chapter, we've learned different methods. We've learned graphing. We've talked about graphing. We review graphing. That's when it's useful. This is on page 185. I'll leave it up here also. We've used substitution. Obviously useful. Um, it's also nice when it's set up for substitution. Elimination was very good. We used that with three variables. Okay, it, it solves it really quick, even when you can use a calculator. And then we've used inverse matrices. And we also could add to that Probably the easiest one of all, reduced row echelon form. Okay? All right. Your, your assignment today is going to be the example side. Example side one through three. So write this down. Example side one, two, and three, you must use inverse matrices to solve. I realize we've done some of those. Okay? What? It says yep. I want you to solve using inverse matrices. Okay. So we're going to change these up here. Solve. Solve using inverse matrices. Okay. You must use inverses on one, two, and three. Okay. On four through fifteen, you can use any method, solve, I'm just going to put solve. You can use any method you want. If you want to do it by hand, do it by hand. If you want to use inverse matrices, use inverses. If you want to use reduced row echelon form, use that. If you're using your calculator, make sure you put what you write down what you're putting into your calculator. You can also choose three problems of your, of whatever you want to skip in this section. So skip three problems. If you want to do those three for extra credit, by all means, doing for extra credit. Okay? And then you have to do number 16 as well. You can skip 17. And I don't care how you solve it. Okay. Any questions? Dylan? Since like we already got some of the answers from 4 through 15, can we just write the answers? The ones that we've done in class, if you did them in your notes, you can just put your answers in here. Other questions? Okay, very good. I will look for that example of reduced row echelon form but while you guys are working on that. Everyone take a look at number seven. Right? Now we did number seven as a class, correct? Yeah. Someone even said it. We already did it, dude. Okay, we did. This is by hand. Okay? All right, that's doing it by hand. Now, you're starting with your matrix A and you're trying to get to your identity. And so you have to do a bunch of manipulation of different rows so that eventually this over here becomes your identity, which is what the end result is, and this over here becomes our inverse. Okay? Now once we have our inverse, once we have our inverse, we can multiply it by matrix B. So I'm not done, right? I, I'd have my inverse there, and I can multiply it by matrix B and find X. Okay? You like your calculator? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah.